Hello, my name is Simon Standish and welcome to this short film about action research. I have two colleagues with me, Danny Chesterman and Jill Coleman, and what we want to do over the next few minutes is just take action research to pieces, look at the process, look at how action research may be different from other personal development or organisational development processes. The overall aim is to help you think about how you might use action research in your organisation. Jill, I wonder whether we could start with you and a sort of bit of theory before we come to Danny's sort of very practical application. How would you describe action research? Well, action research is a form of research um, and, as the name suggests, also a form of action. And it differs from a sort of conventional or mainstream research because it tries to find something out, the answer to a puzzle or what, we, what people want to know about what, what they're working on, and at the same time as finding out, it tries to change something. So develop some practice or enable a group of people to invent a new way of doing something. So it brings together the thinking, problem solving piece and the action piece. And is it primarily of benefit to an organisation or a system or are there personal benefits as well? Uh, well, all of those really. Um, most action researchers like to think of there being three levels in action research, a personal one, so the people involved um, think about their own practice, um, a, an organisational or sort of shared level, so a group of people or community think about what they're doing and how they might do it differently, and also a sort of wider level where you spread what you know through some sort of communication about what's being found out. So it sort of works at all those levels. And typically, how would the process start? Um, well, I think the most common way is in, in organisational settings, it's normally through a group of people who are puzzled by something or who are going through some sort of change process who really want to capture what's going on. They're aware that there are interesting questions that they're addressing or interesting sort of innovation that they're taking part in and they really want to sort of both think about it and um, find some way of spreading what they're doing to other people who might be sort of engaged in the same practice in a different setting or something like that. And can you give me just a couple of examples? Um, yes, I mean, I've worked with people who are, um, it's one is a sort of formal research setting, so a project that was really concerned with how do uh, low carbon technologies that been, have been invented get picked up by the people who might use them. So technologists invent a piece of kit or something like that for people, in our example, in the food industry, and people in the food industry very often don't use it. So we were all trying to find out why is that when there are things that could save carbon, they don't get picked up. So we worked with a group of people who were both the uh, technologists and the commercial users or potential commercial users about what was going on there, what happened. So that would be an example of trying to sort of unravel a puzzle, if you like. And are there some golden rules in, in, in your experience around you know, how to set up and run a successful piece of action research? Well, there, there are some strong principles. Um, and I often think of them in terms of, because I'm a simple person, I, I like simple processes, I think of them in terms of three Ps, which are a practical, participative and progressive. So let me just say practical action research is interested in thinking, but it's really interested in making a difference in practice. So its main raison d'etre is the, the difference it makes to the people who are involved in it. Um, uh, um, participative, it has a strong principle that it's a form of research that is um, engaged with the people who are involved in the research. It's research with people, not on people. So it doesn't involve kind of going along, observing and taking away and sense making without those people involved. It believes strongly in the right of people to make sense of their, their own practice and their own puzzles, if you like. Um, and progressive, uh, it's a sort of contentious word in some ways, but I suppose I take it to mean that it intends for something to get better in some way. Now, what better means is a, is a very good question, and if you abs ab have absorbed the principle of participation, then better would be something that's defined by the participants themselves. They would judge whether something has got better, um, and you know what criteria they use to, m to make that judgment, really. And you've been doing this for some time, so, so I just wonder what sort of general lessons you've derived. 
over um, the years in doing this? Well, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of action research and I'm a fan of it because I think it's, a, you know, basically a simple process, action and reflection, that doesn't sound too complicated. But it's also, if you take it seriously, it's a very profound process because what it does is um, enable people to take ownership of the sense-making process that they are engaged in and take seriously their own capacity to create knowledge in what, in what they're doing. So it has this very strong kind of democratic um, sort of participative ethos to it, uh, which, you know, I just really enjoy. So I think it's a process that, you know, organisations, if they, if they engage in good action research processes, in my mind, be, um, become better organisations because they listen to the voices that they otherwise miss. They test their own assumptions. You know, they try to base what they do on some evidence rather than on a policy that's dreamt up and nobody really follows through whether the policy has been implemented and whether it gets the results that it was intended to get. You know, so it, at some level it's terribly common sense, but at another level it's actually a very powerful sort of democratic process. Jill, thanks very much indeed. Let's, let's go over to Danny because I think I'd like to sort of plunder uh, a case study and your experience, Danny. Another P this. for plunder. <laughs> P for plunder. Um, Danny, you, 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 you did apply to, to quite a, a large issue. Just what was the issue? Mm. Well, um, the issue was really it's about leading complex projects and it all started really when a colleague of mine, Sue Pritchard, noticed that several of her very senior clients across government were really perplexed, picking up what uh, Jill was saying about being genuinely puzzled, about why it was that projects that had been uh, formally accredited through all sorts of processes, uh, big nationally critical projects in many cases, nevertheless failed uh, very often to deliver what the public expected of them and they went over budget, over time, didn't deliver on the benefits and so on. And uh, leaders uh, were understandably really interested in, well, why is that the case? So we thought this was really ripe for action research. And how did you launch this? I mean, how did you assemble mm. people with the same kind of issue? Can you think back to that? Yes. Well, we started to try and hone the question and, and really see whether, you know, we, through conversations with people who were genuinely interested, as we put it, had skin in the game. So it weren't just academically interested, but to whom the answer to this question, they knew, uh, first of all, it mattered, but they knew the answer lay partly in the out there, the doing, doing things more smartly, but also they knew it partly was lay inside themselves. So this, what Jill says about, you know, both reflecting rigorously on their own practice and assumptions uh, they, they were up for that journey. So we started to knit together some connections from our client base and ended up with a consortium of about a dozen people who were genuinely interested in, in exploring this. And give me an idea of the, of the first kind of phase of this and the, and the sort of processes and what mm. do people do? Well, we, we kicked off with a, um, I think it was a two-day startup because, as Jill said, you know, not everybody has a shared understanding of what action research is. And so we felt we needed to give a good sort of opportunity for people to understand what they were getting into, um, but also to learn about each other's environment. So we started off here at Ashridge, and we did some co-design over those two days. And we said, look, there's a number of shapes this action research could take. We knew we wanted to, to, to contain it within a year. So that was a sort of agreed uh, thing. Um, but we had, and we had ideas about how it would unfold. So for example, we, we imagined that there might be some action learning sets. We imagined there might be some visits to one another's uh, sites. We imagined that people would bring some challenges um, to, to, to bear and we would co-consult on them. Um, but in, in, in practice, some of those things happened and other things happened that weren't planned. And that's, that's one of the interesting things, I think, about action Give research. Give me an example of something that, that emerged and... Well, one of the things that happened, for example, was that um, some of the participants in the action research said, well, I've got a really interesting tool or technique that I use to um, 
to try to create the right conversations at the startup of a complex project. Uh, where, so assumptions are being explicitly explored. And he said, well, why don't I do a webinar on it? So we said, yeah, great, fantastic. Let's do a webinar. We set up an hour's webinar. Everybody joined in. Um, he explained how he used the tool. We had some question and discussion, and you know, that, was, that was fantastic. Uh, another, another participant said, look, I'd like to bring my whole team along to explore how to set about the particular challenge that he was facing. Um, I remember it very, very clearly, actually. actually. It was, he was faced with the task of how do you raise the life chances of uh, the under fives in Wales? Pretty sort of significant project, if you like. And he wanted to bring the whole team along to, to explore how they were setting about that. And we spent a whole day how, about how you would set about to do that. Can I ask you about outcomes mm. at the end of your 12 months mm. around this whole issue? Mm. What do you feel were the outcomes mm. at mm. these various different levels? Okay. Um, I mean, at the individual level, the most commonly reported outcome was the value people got from stepping out of their busy day-to-day -day lives to reflect in a challenging and rigorous way on their own practice and their own assumptions, which in turn enabled them to step in, if you like, back into their work situations with a, a slight uh, shift in the way that they were orientating or seeing that, that the task or their role. Um, at a team level, where we got, um, where, where participants brought their teams in, of course, there was a, a huge benefit for those teams to have conversations that, they, that, that often there is not time to do or in the depth that we, you're unable to do in action research, where you can really test one another's assumptions that whether you're actually on the same hymn sheet, if you like, or whether you're actually going in very dif different directions. Um, and as, from an organisational perspective, I think what organi the organisational representatives reported was that it was causing them to really rethink how they go about their their development of their project managers. People who are going to be, if you like, the next generation of leaders of complex projects. How do you go about developing the capacities to lead in conditions which are uncertain, volatile, ambiguous, and, and really having quite a sort of profound um, sort of, you know, effect in, in, in having them to think about that. That's excellent, Danny and Jill. Thank you very much indeed. And that was a very brief look at action research. Um, it certainly seems a, a, a very, very good process, especially in times of change. It certainly has distinct characteristics around, um, as, as it goes in the title, research and action and experimentation. And Jill, I think you put it nicely. You said it's a very practical process, it's participative, and it's progressive. So we hope that this helps you in thinking about how you might use it.